Hello everyone, I'm Vadim, I'm a video tech specialist here at Nagios, and today we're going to be going over the admin pages in Nagios XI. This walkthrough will help you become familiar with the various sections, making it easier to navigate and manage configurations. Now, let's get started. To get to the admin page, you first want to make sure that you are logged in as Nagios admin or you are a user that has admin privileges. Then on the left side, you could find admin. Then on the right side, you could find different tabs for admin pages. Here you'll find administrative tasks and system component statuses. If the monitoring engine or performance grapher is having issues, you could always restart it or stop it here. You could also configure system settings here, or you could configure your monitoring setup or add any new users here. The first section we'll go into is system information. Under system information, you can find system status, monitoring engine, audit log, and check for updates. We can find something similar to the system status that we saw on the previous page, where we have some actions where we could restart or stop any components. You could also add this to a dashboard by clicking this little icon here. To the right of that, we see service statistics. So this is the load, CPU statistics, memory, and swap usage. Now we'll go into monitoring engine status. Here we have a few more dashlets that help us identify monitoring engine process, event queue, check statistics, and engine performance. You could also find some metrics here that you could disable or enable. Now we'll move on to audit log. In audit log, you could find any changes that have occurred in Nagios XI. For instance, on this date and time, the user interface interacted with the type security under the username Nagios admin using this IP address and logged in. You also have the option to filter on top as well as applying and running the filters. And if you have Nagios log server set up, you could send straight to Nagios log server. You also have the option to download the audit log with a CSV or PDF. Towards the right side, you could add it to favorites as well. Moving to our next tab, we have check for updates. Here you could check updates for Nagios XI and see if we're on the latest version or not. Below that, we have an update history where the status shows if it was successful or not, the date it was updated, and some actions such as view, download, or delete the previous update. Now that we have finished system information, we'll move on to users. Under users, we have managed users. Here we could add a new user, add users from LDAP and AD, email all users, or we could select users and delete them or email them. Moving on to LDAP and AD integration, we could add authentication servers and certificates here. We also have an advanced tab where you can enable authentication debugging. Moving on to the next tab, we have notification management. Here we have available templates that have been saved previously. This is blank because I haven't saved anything on this XI machine. We could also create a default template here and we could set these notification messages as default and you have an email messages here. Down below you have email templates that you could change the alert subject, alert message, as well as the service alert subject and message. You could also change mobile texts, notification preferences, notification time periods, or deploy to all users. Here you could select different users and deploy to preferences. Moving on to our next section, we have user sessions. Here we can see the different users that have been created, the last active time that the user was using Nagios XI, the username itself, the IP address that was used, and the active location that they're at. You could also log out of the account here. Now that we have finished the user section, we can move on to system config. Under here, we'll find system settings. In system settings, we have a general program settings. We could change our time zone as well as some other settings. Then for security, you have session cookie settings, two-factor authentication, 
rapid response URL, page security settings, and SSH terminal. You could always update settings on the bottom. Then the next tab is passwords and accounts. In this section, we have account locking and local password requirements. You could choose to enable account lockouts for any unsuccessful login attempts after three or anything custom that you put here. You could also disallow old passwords and enforce requirements, whether it be maximum password age or minimum password length. The next tab we have theme and display. We have a user interface theme here where you could change to modern, modern dark, Neptune, light, 2014, classic, or color correction. For display settings for high charts, we also have the option to color them, as well as setting the scale for graphs and default type for graphs. Below that, we find data settings for high charts, as well as warning and critical line display settings. Moving on to user accounts, we could see general user settings below. We could disable renewal reminder for maintenance for non-admin users. We could also change the language, date format, number format, week format. Below that, we have new user account information email. We could change the subject and body text. Moving on to integration, we see our Fuse key below here, which allows a Fusion 4 instance to be connected and integrate with Nagios XI. The last tab that we have here is backwards compatibility. In this section, you can enable backend logins. This allows you to use the old way of backend ticket authentication. This option is not recommended because it is insecure. Moving on to our next section, we have license information. In license information, we see the license key, whether you have a trial, licensed, or a free license type. You also find the license status right below that, where we see that we have a trial that expires in 18 days. We have the number of licensed hosts, which is unlimited for this trial key, and the amount of current hosts that we currently have. If you decide to get the enterprise features, you could enter that key in here, or if you want a trial extension, you could enter that key in right here. Now we can move on to proxy configurations. On this page, you could set up a proxy that XI will contact another server. You could enter those details below. Now we'll move on to system profile. Here you could view your system info and download your profile. Moving on to email settings, we can find an outbound and inbound settings. In outbound settings, you have a send from email, a send method, as well as logging and debugging. And below that, you have some SMTP settings. If you wanted to send a test email, you could always click this button, change your email address that it'll send out to, and click send test email. Now moving on to mobile carriers, you can find a list of mobile carriers below as well as the email to text address format. Now let's move on to performance settings. Here we have some tabs labeled pages where you could change page and status settings, as well as dashlets where you have global dashlet settings and refresh rates. Moving on to databases, you could find the Nagios XI database. Here you could customize max times for different Nagios XI databases or NDO databases. Moving on to subsystem, you could change outbound data transfers, listeners for unconfigured objects, logging, and BPI syncs. You also have a timeout that you could change here. Moving on to auto running, you could disable reports from automatically running as soon as you load pages, or you could disable metrics when the page loads. Now moving on to backend cache, you could enable backend cache and select at a location where it will be cached, as well as customizing the backend cache expiration time. The next tab is snapshots. Here you could configure the number of core snapshots, error snapshots, or core configuration snapshots that you might have. And the last tab is PDF exporting. Here you could tweak default delay in milliseconds or capacity planning delay.
Now we can move on to the next section on announcement banners. Here you could create a new announcement banner that you could add a custom message. You could set a banner type, enable messages, scheduled messages, a time frame that you'd like to send that out to, a knowledgeable message, or setting messages for specific users. And you could select those users in here. Once we are finished with that, we can move on to automatic login. Here you can enable auto login and select which account you want to use. Now that we have finished the system config setting, we'll move on to the monitoring config. Here we find config snapshots, which shows you the snapshots that Nagios XI has created and the differences in changes that it has added. You could also view the different changes from prior snapshots, as well as having the option to view changes from current snapshot, restoring, downloading, and archiving different snapshots. If you archive a snapshot, you could find it in this tab called Archive Snapshots. Moving on to Migrate Server, this allows you to migrate your existing Nagios core configurations into Nagios XI. You could put in the server address here, as well as changing the username and password below. And once you're done, you click Migrate. Now moving on to check file permissions. This page checks file permissions for Nagios XI, as well as Nagios Core. Now moving on to the next page, we have NRDS Config Manager. You would need to set up and configure an NRDP server before creating an NRDS config. Now we'll move on to unconfigured objects. Here we can find any hosts or services that have been unconfigured. For instance, you have something that came in that doesn't necessarily have a rule in place yet. You could select a host or service and have it configured here. You could also find some auto configure settings down here. You could enable auto import, which uses core config managers templates to be applied below. Always remember to update settings if you change any settings. Now we'll move on to SNMP trap interface. This page is very helpful when you have SNMP traffic, but it is not configured. Then you could define that trap and add it in to Nagios XI. And now we'll move on to Deadpool settings. This automatically deletes hosts and services that are a problem state longer than a threshold that you specify. So you could enable a Deadpool processor here, and it'll also remove performance data files and email users depending if it deletes any hosts or service. You could also find hosts and service settings here where you could change the stage timings and after stage two, it'll delete or deactivate. You could also put exclusion filters here if you have a host or service that is creating problems longer than your thresholds. Now that we have finished monitoring configs, let's move on to check transfer. Here we find outbound transfers and inbound transfers. You have a few tabs that you could select, such as NRDP and NSCA. And below that, you have some additional settings where you could configure external applications and services to send to Nagios. Now that we have finished check transfers, let's move on to system extensions. Our first tab is on Manage Components. Here we have a list of components that have been added into Nagios XI. You could also browse and upload your own components here. You also have some additional information such as type, settings, some actions such as downloading or deleting, and you also have the current version and the status. Now we'll move on to managing config wizards. Here we have a list of wizards that have been already added in Nagios XI. Here you have the option to view the type, actions such as downloading the archived, deleting, and you have your version and status as well. If you wanted to add new configuration wizards, you could always visit Nagios Exchange or upload your own wizard here. Now we'll move on to managing dashlets. This is a similar page where you could use these dashlets to download or delete, as well as adding it to your dashboard. 
If you want to add a custom dashlet, you could browse and upload it here. Now moving on to plugins, we have a very similar page where you could browse and upload your plugins here. You also have the option to add new plugins using Nagios Exchange. And below that, you'll find the different plugins, owners, groups, the permissions it has, the date that it was uploaded, and a download and delete button. Moving on to graph templates, we could upload our own template here, and we have a list of graphs below. Now we can move on to managing MIBS. And here we find a list of MIBS where you can see the first time it has been uploaded, the status, date processed, all associated traps, and some actions. You also have the option to view file permissions, process all traps, undo all trap processing, and viewing all associated traps. You also have the option to upload your own custom MIB, as well as processing the traps in the MIB. If you have some traps that have been unconfigured, you could click on this link, which leads you back to the SNMP trap interface. If you are searching for some MIBs, you could click this link where there's hundreds of MIBs available. The last section that we have is custom includes. In custom includes, we have the option to upload various files, such as CSS, JavaScript, or images. Now that we have finished system extensions, we can move on to system backups. Here we can find scheduled backups, where you could enable FTP, SSH, and local backups. And to enable each one, you go to each section, such as FTP or SSH, click Enabled, then you'll have to specify the scheduled backups time, as well as the SSH server, username, SSH auth type, as well as password, and remote directory. You also have the option to add status emails to scheduled backup jobs. And once you have set up some backups, you can find local backup archives in here, as well as any backups that you create by clicking this button. This will specify the date it was created, the file name, the size, as well as actions such as downloading, editing, or deleting. And there you go. You can now quickly find settings to make configuration changes. If you enjoyed this video, consider visiting our YouTube channel for more helpful content. If you need further support, visit support.nagios.com. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.